So what are the reasons for cash misses? It's worthwhile to understand these reasons because that can help us redesign the cash and improve performance. So there are three types of cash misses. The first one is called the compulsory miss. So imagine you're starting a program. Your processor and its cache is going to be initialized to an empty state. So your cache is empty. So when a program accesses an address X, let's say, for the first time, it is guaranteed to miss the cache. Because this is the first time I'm accessing a cache block and there's no way that I would have uh, brought that particular cache block from the main memory. And so the miss that is due to the fact that I'm accessing the cache block for the first time is called the compulsory miss. Now, if I want to reduce the number of compulsory misses, then what can I do? Well, recollect uh, what we talked about spatial locality, where we said, if I'm going to access an address X, then I'm more likely to access addresses that are close to it. So now address X plus one, I, I may not have ever accessed it in the past, but it's possible to turn this memory access to address X plus one into a cache hit if I place X plus one and X in the same cache block. So by increasing the size of your cache block, you can reduce the number of compulsory misses. The second type of uh, cache miss is due to smaller cache capacity. So if I didn't have a large enough cache, then I could have cache misses. So for example, if I accessed a location X, and then I accessed a number of other locations, and then I ended up filling up my cache, and now I no longer have space for more cache blocks and I keep accessing more cache blocks. So now those cache blocks, if I bring it into the cache, is going to evict the one that contains the address X. So later when I access the same address X, I may encounter a miss. This miss is called the capacity miss because if I had a cache that was large enough to store all these cache blocks, then I could have avoided this cache miss. So the way to reason about a cache miss and understand whether it is a capacity miss or not is by asking this question, would this cache miss would have occurred in a cache with infinite size, but with the same cache block size, right? So you would, you're, you would have to go and simulate an infinite cache and then see whether uh, for this particular address pattern, if uh, memory access would be a hit or a miss. If the answer is, yeah, this would still be a miss, then it is a compulsory miss. But if it is a hit in your infinite cache, but it is a miss in your given cache, then you will say, oh, well, this miss would not have happened in an infinite cache and therefore the problem here is um, smaller cache capacity. Now let's say you had large enough cache, right? What else could go wrong? Well, we talked about how fully, ca fully associative caches are expensive in terms of area as well as uh, takes longer to do all those comparisons that you need to do. So then we talked about um, a direct mapped cache and two way or three or four way set associative caches, right? Now, because of the diminished uh, degree of associativity, you may have some cache misses. So uh, the example that we have been talking about is, let's say you have a direct mapped cache and let's say the blocks A and B happen to map to the same um, cache line. And so if they are accessed uh, alternatively, we said, well, a and B would kick each other out from the cache. As a result, you may end up with a cache hit rate of 0%. And the reason why we are incurring all these cache misses is not necessarily because of, because of lack of cache capacity. It might very well be the case that you had enough cache capacity where you had plenty of these cache lines sitting around, but they're not being utilized. But uh, the cache blocks A and B happen to map and conflict 
map to the same cache line and conflict with each other, right? And so the way to reduce those conflict misses is to try and map these cache, um, uh, try and provide more, free, either, either try and map these two blocks to different uh, cache lines, which means that uh, maybe you need to increase the cache size and that way you would be able to um, reduce the conflicts that may happen. But uh, more importantly, uh, you probably want to provision more uh, ways so that uh, A and B can be simultaneously be stored in, uh, in the cache. So if you are given a cache and you ran a program and you observed a cache, some cache misses, and if for this, for a equivalent fully associative cache of the same size, if those misses would not have happened, then you can say that those misses in your given cache is due to um, conflict misses. So now let's say I give you a cache. Um, let's say I'm going to call this as a given cache. So I'm going to call this as a 370 cache just so that we can remember what we're talking about. So I've designed a cache in my class and I'm going to run my program and I'm going to observe a certain uh, cache hit and miss pattern, right? So let's say I have addresses A1, A2, A3 and so forth. So I'm running my program. This is my sequence of addresses. And when I ran it on this cache, I observed that some of these are misses and some of them are hits. And now I ask myself my, this question, what is the type of these misses? How do I go about answering that question? Well, to answer that question, you need to simulate two more caches. One is an infinite cache that has the same block size as your 370 cache and then a fully associative cache with the same cache size as your 370 cache. So let's say the size is S for the 370 cache, the size is S for the fully associative cache. Let's say the block size is B for your 370 cache, the block size is B for the fully associative cache. For the infinite cache, again, the block size should be B, but obviously it's infinite cache, so there is no size restriction, okay? So I would go and simulate these three caches for exactly the same address pattern that we have here, and then observe whether these uh, accesses are going to be hits or misses. And let's say I observe that the access to the address A1 is a miss in the infinite cache. Then I can confidently say that this miss is not because of lack of capacity. It's not because uh, due to lack of associativity. It's simply because it's a compulsory miss, meaning this is the first time I'm accessing this cache block. And so then if I observe a miss in the infinite cache, I'm going to classify those as compulsory misses. So miss in an infinite cache would be classified as a compulsory miss. And then I go and uh, simulate my fully associative cache. Let's say there was a memory access which was uh, a hit. Let's say this is my infinite cache and this is my 370 cache. So let's say there is a hit in the infinite cache. But then when I simulated my fully associative cache, um, it turned out to be a miss. So what does that say? Well, it says that this miss is not really due to lack of associativity because we are simulating a fully associative cache, but it should be because of lack of size. And so any miss that is observed in the fully associative cache of the same size as your 370 cache I'm going to call it as it has to be due to lack of capacity. So therefore, uh, we are going to classify that as a capacity miss. So and finally, uh, any miss that you observed only in 
your 370 cash but if it was a hit in both infinite cash and a fully associative cash would be classified as a conflict miss so to summarize to figure out to classify the misses observed for a given cache, you need to simulate two other fake caches. One with the infinite capacity but with the same block size. Another which is fully associative but it has the same cache size and same block size as your given 370 cache. And then I simulate the caches, these three caches, for the same address pattern and any miss that I observe in the infinite cache is going to be classified as a compulsory miss and of the remaining misses that you observed in the 370 cache any miss that I observe in the fully associative cache would be a capacity miss and of the remaining uh, cache misses observed in the 370 cache those will be classified as a conflict miss so I would have to choose this specific order when I try to classify a miss into one of these three categories.